Hi, I'm Bob. Let's continue our solutions to the computer exercises for Chapter Ten, Basic Regression Analysis with Time Series Data. We use the data on monthly unemployment claims in the fifth computer exercise. For Part One, we regress the log. Unemployment claims on the linear time trend t and eleven monthly dummy variables. We can generate the time trend t first. It equals the observation index underscore n. The coefficient on the time trend is minus zero point zero one four. It is statistically significant at the one percent level. It implies that. The unemployment claims decrease by 1.4 percent per month on average over time. There is seasonality in unemployment claims. The summer and autumn months saw lower unemployment claims than the winter and spring months. We use January as the base month in the model. The coefficients on the summer and autumn monthly dummies are negative and significant. In part two, we add the dummy indicator enterprise zoom to the model. The coefficient on the dummy variable enterprise zoom is minus zero point five zero eight. It suggests that the enterprise zoom decreases unemployment claims by thirty nine point eight percent. In part three, we must assume that. The decision to build the enterprise zoom was not based on the past unemployment status of people in Anderson. It is not likely the case. Generally speaking, the decision to create the enterprise zoom should not be correlated with any unmeasured factors in the error term that affect the unemployment claims in the past, current. And future, which is stated as the zero conditional mean assumption for time series for unbiased ORS estimates. Let's do computer exercise six. We first regress the fertility rate on the time chain T and its square term. We save the residuals and regress the residuals on the personal tax exception. Two dummy variables, World War Two and Buff Control Pill, and T and squared T. The R squared is zero point six zero one five. It is lower than that in equation ten point thirty five in the textbook. The R squared decreases because the variation. In the outcome variable that the time trend can explain has already been taken away by the first regression. That is, the detrended outcome variable has less variation because its time trend is removed. In part three, we add. The qubit term of t to the model. It is statistically significant at the one percent level, with a t statistic of minus six point eight one. As mentioned in the textbook, we have to be careful not to include too many polynomial terms to capture the movements in the outcome variable that should be explained by the explanatory variables in the model. Let's find answers to computer exercise seven. In part one, we estimate a simple regression model relating the growth in real per capita consumption to the growth in real per capita disposable income. The slope coefficient is zero point five seven one. It suggests that. When the income growth increases by ten percentage points, the consumption growth increases by five point seven percentage points on average. 
The Fed is statistically significant at the one percent level, with a T statistic of eight point four seven. We add the lack of income growth to the model in part two. The estimate implies that a ten percentage points increase in income growth in the last time period only raises the consumption growth by one percentage point. In the current time period, the Fed is not statistically different from zero at the ten percent level, with a t-statistic of one point three nine. We add the real interest rate to the model in Part Three. The coefficient on the interest rate is practically tiny and statistically insignificant. Let's do computer exercise eight. We add the third and fourth legs of the personal tax exemption to the model and use the test command to perform the F test for their joint significance. The F statistic is zero point zero six and its p value is zero point nine. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that both are zero at any reasonable level. In part two, we follow the trick and let the theta denote the long run propensity. We write delta zero in terms of theta, delta one to delta four. Substitute for delta zero in the model, and we obtain the new regression model. We generate four new variables: p d one, p d two, p d three, and p d four. From the new regression, we can obtain the estimate for the long run propensity and its standard error, t statistic, and p value. Compared to those values in equation ten point nineteen, the long run propensity increases when we consider more time lags. The standard error is similar. In part three, we estimate the polynomial distributed lag model. The finite distributed lag model of order four can be written as a polynomial distributed lag model with a parameters gamma zero, gamma one, and gamma two. We can regress the fertility rate on new variables x one t, x two t, and x three t, and the two dummies w w two t and p t. We obtain the estimates for the gammas. Then we can calculate deltas. Finally. The estimate of the long run propensity is the sum of the estimates of the deltas, which is zero point one two three seven. It is very close to that of the unrestricted model.
Let's solve computer exercise nine. We regress the stock market index on the percentage change in industrial production and return on three months T bills. Beta one should be positive because industrial production growth is good news for the stock market. Beta two should be negative because a higher interest rate. Increases the opportunity cost of the stock market investment. In part two, we estimate the model by ORS. The estimate of beta one is economically small and statistically insignificant. The estimate of beta two is minus one point three six two, which implies that. As the return on the three months T bills increases by one point, the return on the stock market decreases by about one point four points, holding the industrial production growth fixed. It is statistically significant at the five percent level, with a T statistic of minus two point five two, and a P value of zero point zero one two. For the third part, only the interest rate is statistically significant. For the last part, we use the contemporaneous data on the outcome variable and the explanatory variables in the model. There is nothing to do with prediction to test whether the return on the stock market is predictable by the return on the three months T bills. We should regress the former in time t, on the latter in time t minus one. Thank you for doing the computer exercises with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.